Welcome back, Galafan members, or if it's your first time here, thank you for stopping by, you guys. I'm pretty excited, okay? I'm trying to control myself because I don't want to yell into the microphone. But I just crossed 5,500 trophies for the first time, and this is about 500 trophies more than I've ever had. I cannot wait to open up my season reward chest. And that will definitely be coming in a future episode. I realize it's not the top, not the best chest out there, but I'm pretty excited to have that opening. That is the deck that did it for me. That's right. No Royal Giant, no Elite Barbarian. Nowhere to be found. So, you know, I will admit to uh, slightly BMing players that drop the Royal Giant and Elite Barbarians on my way up the ladder. But I couldn't resist, you guys. It's just such a cliche right now. Now this deck, I pretty much came down to the same strategy, just rinse and repeat. And that was, ideally, we'll start out with either the Goblin Barrel or the Hog Rider, or in this case both, uh, going after the right tower. Now, I did feel like as time went on, more and more players seemed to be coming at me from their own right lane. And uh, I don't know, maybe if it's a better idea to start pushing down the left lane instead. But this was working out for me more often than not. And uh, so right here, you're going to see, this was the actual battle that got me to cross uh, 5,500. And uh, you'll see that there's something interesting that happens in this battle in uh, just a few seconds. So we're down to the uh, last two minutes of the battle. He's got the furnaces going down. I'm doing okay. I'm chipping away pretty solidly on his right tower. And he's barely touched my left, just with the spirits that are rolling in there one at a time. And this is really how this deck has worked out. In fact, I found I get a lot of success if I wait for the big pushes until late. Right here, I'm only going to drop the barrel or the hog after that tower if I'm nearly full. Except for right here when I realize that... Well, I mean, what do you guys say? Rage quit or DC? I I'm guessing, I have to admit, it's a DC. I, I wasn't that far ahead. I don't really feel like the guy thought he was outclassed by me by any means. Uh, but yeah... I got the three crown gift, I got the TCG you guys, and it sure enough was the three crown gift that let me break 5,500 trophies. So that was kind of crazy to uh, have battled so hard this season, back and forth, up and down so many times, and then to have this battle be the one that got me to 5,500. Now we'll take a look at a couple other battles including the one after this, one of the most epic confrontations, and it does not end how you might think. Okay, we'll get to that in just a minute. But just again, going to kind of review the Galabate deck strategy. Now, this deck has evolved and changed slightly over the season. Uh, the spells are really what changed. Uh, you'll see right here I've got arrows and poison. It started out the season with a uh, rocket and zap, and I found myself over and over zapping things like minion hordes and then letting them get in and damage my tower severely so we eventually switched to arrows and i have to tell you super super happy about the arrows really loving this strategy and then uh, right here check out how i squeeze in the skarmy behind the giant that's going to control that three musketeer push that can be oh so dangerous and then the goblin gang splits up handles both sides we get a little bit of a push that's going to put some pressure on the left hand side Looks like he's not going to answer it, and that's okay. So we'll take that six, eight, nine hundred, almost a thousand hit points come off that left tower. So if we end up in a two-one situation, we're feeling pretty good. Usually, I'm using poison to uh, mitigate the amount of elixir being put out by the pumps and the goblin barrel. Uh, ideally, if I've seen my opponent drop the zap, the fireball, or the log right after that, and that's the beauty of this deck, it baits out that type of control, that type of splash. Now, this I will call the Galabate deck because it is a little bit unique. The arrows, of course, and the poison. Uh, you see a lot of variations of this deck. Some people will bring a knight instead. Some people might bring a bandit or even a, a dark goblin. But for me, this is really where I settled, and I was super happy with this. Again, same strategy on the left, and I knew, I knew he was going to zap the Skarmy on the left that time, so I was ready immediately with the goblin gang. He really only had the opportunity to either zap the Inferno Tower or zap the Skarmy. And after he made the mistake of zapping the Inferno the first time, I knew that he was going to switch up and that worked out beautifully. We controlled that damage again. Princess did a good job over there along with the poison. We've got a tower down. We're moving on to the left tower already with 30 or so seconds left. We're feeling pretty confident. Every bit of hit points off that left tower 
Now you know this was a good feeling. When you can drop the poison down and take out an entire minion horde, that just feels good. Now it's just control, making sure nothing weird happens in the last 20 seconds. Usually you expect to see that desperation, three musketeers in the same spot, there they are, all three musketeers, and that's kind of the habit of the three musky players is to throw them all down at the end like that and just hope they can get that last second push in. Not going to happen here. Once again, Poison doing double duty and another win over a level 13 player. I, I, I tell you, I amaze myself sometimes. Okay, so that was a big win. We had a lot of big wins this season. This next battle uh, was a battle where I, if I had won this, I'll just give you a little hint. If I had won this, I would have crossed 5,500. And I have to tell you, the cool thing about playing battles like this at high trophy counts, it brings back those tense feelings, that elevated heart rate feeling that I used to get in Clash of Clans when I was pushing trophies and I had a really tough raid. Now that's kind of gone away in Clash of Clans simply because there aren't hard raids anymore. Almost every raid is a gimme one star or two until they do something to the Town Hall 11 balance. But that's for another video. Right now we're talking about, yes, trying to stop the Lava Hound deck. So this has always been probably the hardest deck for me to control. The key is getting something in to stop the opponent from taking out the Inferno Tower before it takes down the Lava Hound. So the Balloon, now this was unexpected. He threw the Balloon in right away after the Lava Hound and the Mega Minion, and I had no answer. Desperation, arrows, poison. Yeah, that Balloon's going to get a lot of damage in. And so early on, not feeling good about this battle. First minute, and that right hand tower is less than 50%. Then he quick pushes again with the Goblin Gang. Princess, I know this is not ideal. They split up and it makes it tough for her to control. In fact, she gets wiped out. And here I just have to try to go on the push. I had really nothing else to do. And he's got the great counter. He drops the tombstone. So my Hog Rider is just barely going to get in a second shot. And sure enough, he's back on the push. Another Lava Hound. This one right at the bridge. And of course, yes, the skeletons, worst possible scenario for my little Inferno Tower. It is distracted on those guys, and that is the sign of a really good player. I mean, this guy knew what he was doing, and right here, obviously, I'm going to lose a tower. So, I'm kind of right here thinking this game is pretty much over. I mean, we're a minute left. I've barely touched either tower. I've got a thousand hit points off that right tower. I've got to put something together here just to try to grab the tie. So the strategy here is to allow him to damage my towers as much as he needs. In fact, I was really hoping he would push for a three, which kind of looks like what he's sort of doing. A lot of the troops are coming after that king's tower, and that's great for me because I want to try to grab this right tower while he focuses on doing bits and pieces of damage to my king's tower and defending his own. So a little bit more damage. This was a great poison spell on the Mega Minion, the dragon, and whatever was left there. Just about taking them out. Here comes his balloon, and I just go on the offensive. I'm hoping that the two towers can do most of the control, along with the gang. I know I'm going to take a lot of damage to this king's tower, but again, it's a risk I have to take if I want any chance of tying this game up. There goes another big group. A good poison spell is going to take pretty much everybody out. And check out the tower under 500. Here comes the goblin barrel. Can it do it? With six seconds left, it ties the score. And yes, I'm going to take more damage to the King's Tower, but that's ideal. We've got a big, tanky King's Tower. It's not that left crown tower. Had he been pushing over there, then maybe the outcome would have been different. Here he's going for the three. Big mistake. I can easily pull that Lava Hound away from the tower. And check out the epic poison right here. Look at this. Annihilate everybody. Just mass vaporization. And you guys, right here, I'm just in preservation mode. I never even considered the idea of doing any damage to his towers. You can see his left tower is still untouched. That's because this is all about defense. All my units going in the back corner. Everybody getting dropped as far back as they possibly can. I just want to survive for another 20 seconds. A defensive hog rider goes down the inferno tower. Check out everybody. Good value one more time from the poison spell. That's massive poison value. The Lava Hound's going to get in there, but it's going to be too late. Everybody on the ground distracts the pups. We are going to get this one done, at least a tie. And I have to say, I said this in clan chat, I was as proud of this tie as any victory the entire season. 
So there it is, you guys. I have managed to push beyond where I thought my noobness would ever take me. But then again, everybody's pushing hard this season for those big rewards. Thank you guys, as always, for watching all the way to the end of this episode. Make sure you subscribe for the earliest possible update and sneak peek information. And come back again tomorrow for more full attacks. Uh, Peter, remember what we talked about. You get your own videos now. Gally Don.